So if you're listening to these lectures in order, you've just maybe listened to the part I talked about how to say how electrons are configured using the box and arrow notation. Sometimes that is called actually the hand cramp method because it takes a lot of effort, I think, sometimes to draw those little boxes. Just a reminder that, like I said, box and arrow notation for electron configuration, you have to label your boxes. You have to label uh, what your boxes are or it doesn't make sense. You have to label what subshells you're putting electrons in. Anyway, you might be pleased then with this other type of uh, electron configuration. Again, your textbook just simply calls this electron configuration, otherwise known as spectroscopic notation, SPDF notation. So we're going to take a look at, um, well, I'm going to show you some examples, but what you're going to see is that um, we're going to use little superscripts to say how many electrons are in a subshell. And we can actually, and this will make more sense when I do an example down the road, spectroscopic notation is handy when you want to kind of rearrange how you are presenting your electron configuration in what we call order of increasing n. So here we go. Let's take a look at the ones we just did. Okay, so we just did these in box and arrow notation. Now these are spectroscopic notation. So hydrogen is atomic number one. We need to find homes for home, a home for one electron. So do you see where that one electron is going to go in the 1s subshell? So that's the subshell, and the number of electrons is one. Okay, helium has two electrons, and we can actually accommodate that second electron in that same subshell. So again, these superscripts are the number of electrons. Okay. Um, all right. Then we move on to lithium, and we said lithium actually you can't put three. Lithium's atomic number three. You need five homes for three electrons. So now we go into the n is equal to two. We actually go to the 2s subshell. So can you see where these add up? Two plus one, that add up, adds up to what? Three electrons. Um, after lithium, we have beryllium, atomic number four, homes for four electrons. Um, and when I say the electron configuration, you're going to hear me call this one, or call all of these. What I'll say is 1s, 2, 2s, 2. So I kind of say the subshell, and then I pause and say electrons, subshell, pause and say electrons. Of course, 2 plus 2 is 4, so 4 electrons around a beryllium atom. Boron, then, we need to put um, that, one, that last electron in the 2p. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Now this is where I think we start to lose a little bit of information. We said with carbon that actually according to Hoon's rule, rule excuse me, the, these two electrons in the 2p actually spread out. So remember when we drew the box and arrow notation, it kind of, uh, our two electrons did like that. And like I said, we kind of lose a little bit of information there, but this means the same thing. Okay, this is spectroscopic notation, and this is, sorry, oops, are you serious? Okay, this is box and arrow notation, and this is, uh, this is uh, spectroscopic notation. Okay, nitrogen, we need to find homes for seven electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Remember, any p-type um, subshell can hold how many electrons? It can hold six. So here we go. Oxygen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Then we go on to uh, fluorine, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And then, dun dun dun, we finish out the period with neon, our rare gas. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So yeah, you're going to need to be able to do both types of notations, uh, but th this one's kind of nice. <laughs> it's not as stressful as drawing all those little boxes, I think.